split or separate the blue part of the blue jay to form a hackle and you split the feather what happens this thins it really down so that you can actually wind it on now I'm just going to show you how I, how I do it so it's quite simple really you separate the blue by simply turn you grab the tip and then you slowly start to tear them apart but just take your time let it rip all the way down and there we are now what you've got there is a nice hackle ready to tie in and you'll see how it's split come away and then I mean, it's just a matter of then coming in and I usually tear it straight from that and there you go and that's you your blue jay feather ready to tie. Now some people can even you can go in there and take out even some more but to me that's fine. That's ideal for winding on to form where you're tying a bumble or whatever. Mainly bumbles with the, the blue jay in this case. Now the hook I'm using is a Camasan, it's a B175 in this case a size 10. Thread I'm going to be using black uni thread NATO. Now you could use a a lighter colour thread, you get an orange or yellow, something, just to go with the fly a wee bit. But, to be honest with you, the black was the one I originally used in this fly. Now, thread, we start at the eye, and we take it down the shank, forming a nice layer. And then stop it, just basically so when you let the bobbin go, it's in line with the barb of the hook. Now you could use red seals for here, or something else for the, the tag. Um, I'm using a red holographic and this is a medium tinsel I'm just going to come round round the bend just a couple of millimetres and back up and then just form the tag using the holographic tinsel now this is a vineyard one now you have to protect it it goes silver once it starts to wear a wee bit so what I do is you can uh, some light bug bond on the top. It's a tiny drop. And then what you want to do is obviously using a dubbing needle, just spread it around. If it's too much you can take it away. I usually clean my needle on the on the side of a, a cloth which I have at the side of my desk. I just tack it to the side and then I can clean my needle. Which takes away the excess. Then what you want to do is set your resin. Doesn't take long. And that's your tag formed. Now for the tail I'm going to use some bronze mallard. And if you're a fishing competitions you have to watch the length of your tail. This one's for island, so like a normal measure would be the length of the hook or so. And that would go over the back. If it was uh, for international fishing competitions here in the UK, you're looking only at the shank length of a tail, so about half the length of that. And then you would take away the excess. Now, other material that's very popular for tails is this type of fly. The uh, pheasant tail. Now the rib, just a gold oval tinsel, a small gold, which I'm going to catch on the side, full length of the body. But at this point, I would take the thread up, making sure everything is well tied down, and then come back. Now the body of the fly is going to be gold and olive seals fur one here. Again, gold and olive. There's lots of gold and olive out there. Everyone's got their own idea what it should look like. Then slide it up. And then you want to tighten up. Just basically build up your body. Just take your time.
leave your cell a good two millimeters for the head area for tying in your hackles and so on. Now the body hackle, I've got this is a Met saddle. It's a light ginger dyed. You can see this uh, a yellow, which gives it that golden yellow colour. And I'm just going to catch it on the side. Make sure you wax your thread and we fold this back for security. Basically what this does is tuck it in and you can pass the brake now for it to come away. And then you want to run it down. Depending on how heavy you want it, depending where you are, an island, I would say that's about right. And sometimes even heavier than that. And then come up through with your gold oval tinsel. I usually break this off at this point and before I bring the tinsel to the front I lift, I pull the fibres back and lift it up. Catch it with the thread and keeping the oval tinsel on the side I go all the way down towards the eye and just before the eye I'll trim this away and then wax your thread. So watch these fibres here. tidy up. It's important that you do tidy up. Now you may want to bring some of the seals fur out and you can use a bit of velcro to do that. Just come in and grab some of the seals fur which mixes well into the, the hackle. There we go. Then there's two ways of finishing off this way this fly. The bronze mallard can be on last or on before the front hackle. And I've tied it both ways, uh, been successful both ways so it's up to yourself. Now I'm going to tie the bronze mallard on first and then the hackle in front. Now again there's many ways to tie the bronze mallard in. Everybody's got their own idea. Traditionally uh, or originally it was tied with a single feather here. Now what I normally do is pull out these ends and I lay one on top of the other so I lay them down and then the tip I would take off and then split these in half so you get like a kind of fan and then with the front or the front of the feather on the top I come down keeping them slightly above you don't want them below you just fold them round the sides and then come in and tighten up. Now you're looking, the length is up to yourself. Again, if you want it shorter, so it's up to you. You will have to if you uh, want to always reduce it. The flies normally tied like that called dablins. Uh, people I know call them dablins. And in an island means small. So we trim that away again. Just make sure there's wax on my thread and tidy up. And then come back in with the rest of the bronze mallet. And we've got it sitting on top of the other. Now you just pull them in. The good stuff in the top, the brightest or the darkest, sorry. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. And you can actually just fold it. Set it on the top and bring your fingers through. Depending on how good the fibres are. And there we are. And that's about right. Wing length is much the length of the hook. And then trim away the excess. Again, I'm just going to tidy up. Now I'm just going to measure something for you, just to show you the space I have here. And this is the type of space that you, ha you need to wind your J. Now, I'll do it in centimetres. And uh, obviously I'll scale out in inches. Now you'll see that there's two mil in that area. Get the inches, it's upside down. Just slightly more than a sixteenth. As you can see. So that's the type of space that you need to wind your hackle. Now at the beginning of the video you've seen me splitting the the J. Now the length you're looking just the impression, you don't need a lot of this, now you do. 
uh, you can really, if you want to really build it up. Now I'm catching in about there, so just trim away the excess here. Important that you make sure your wax on your thread. And then come in and catch it. I catch it on the side. And if you're using the other side of the feather, the other side of the, or the, say the left wing, and you, you have to wind towards yourself. And you have to be careful how you tie off. Now, all you do is come round, you do a turn in front of the other. You're looking probably a couple of turns anyway. Once you're happy, you come across your thread. Now there's still enough left on this for a throat. So don't throw away. You'll be able to tie another fly with it and trim away the excess. Now what I'm going to do again, make sure the thread's waxed, give you, the, give you the grip, and then tidy the head up. Now, I have put jungle cock on these before, and it's up to yourself, really, whether you want to do it. I'll just show you how to put it on, because there's still plenty of room there. Now it's got two eyes the same length, same size obviously. Let's try and get two nice eyes here. And then what I do here is just simply open out the area I want you to tie them in. Hold both eyes. You can do them individually if you want. They're ready, sitting. As you can see that's the underside you're seeing there. Come in. You can put them up into the wing or along the side of the body, it's up to you. I'm just going to slightly put it up into the wing. Now, the first turn of the thread slipped there, but it looks okay. I mean, I can still work away with that. And we just make sure I've got the wax. Now, what I like to do is keep, obviously, always keep the thread nice and tight. I'm going to bring the thread to the front and then tidy up from the front and working the thread up. And then remove the waist of your jungle cock. And there we are. And that's a. I'm not going to name the fly. There's too many experts out there that have their own idea of what it is. It's a golden olive, red tag, Boron's mallard, blue jay jungle cock fly. So it's up to you what you want to call it. And all we have to do is tie off. There's one thing, the fly's certainly worth tying. The methods are there to help you tie, hopefully a better fly, enjoy your tying. That's all I'm about. And then all I've got to do, I mean, to get a really nice hard head, if you can do this, I've got some super glue here. Now, touch the head all the way around. Just be careful, you really got to be careful. You don't want to touch your feathers, especially under here. And then work your, th work your way around. If you can turn your face like I'm doing, obviously makes the job a lot easier. Now, the super glue sets really hard. Helps to fill in any spaces in your thread. And then when you go to varnish it, you've got a really nice, bright, perfect head that you like to see in the fly. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Irish pattern, which, which I have, well, basically, it's caught fish, mask, melvin, corb. It can be fished, and it will represent a few species of flies, which all good Irish patterns do.